In the last video, we looked at the relative frequency of an event, which I'm calling E. The relative frequency of an event is the number of occurrences of the event divided by the number of trials in the experiment. So I'm letting N stand for the number of trials here. If, as we increase the number of trials, in theory, if we let N tends towards infinity, if we take this limit, and this limit exists, then the relative frequency approaches what we call the probability of the event, written P and E in brackets. Now we could imagine an experiment consisting of selecting a card from a pack of 52 cards. And this experiment could consist of many trials. It could consist of hundreds of trials. So each trial would involve selecting a card from a pack of 52 cards, noting its value, replacing the card, and uh, then making another selection, and so on. And we could note the frequency of each card selected. We could calculate the relative frequency of each card by dividing the number of occurrences of a particular card, say the ace of diamonds, and dividing it by the total number of trials. We could imagine several hundred trials. And if we find that this number approaches 1 over 52 for each card in the pack, then, then well, we have the probability that a particular card is selected. It's 1 over 52. And we refer to our selection as a random selection. So normally when you see the words random selection, we mean that each card in the pack has the same probability of being selected and that probability is 1 over 52. Now let's look at an experiment consisting of the throwing of a die. A fair that is unbiased die is thrown. This means that the probabilities of getting any of the numbers 1 to 6 are the same. Indeed each probability is equal to 1 over 6 which is 0.166 recurring. Here is a simulation of a die that has been thrown 999 times. We have the frequencies of each value here. In other words, the number 1 appeared 173 times, the number 2 appeared 162 times, and so on. In this row here, we have the relative frequency. That's got by taking the frequency, 173, and dividing it by the number of trials, which is 999 in this case. We can see that the relative frequencies float around the value 0.1666 recurring, or 1 16th. Of course, the sum of the relative frequencies is 1. And the sum of the frequencies for each number is equal to the number of trials. We can change the values on the die, and we can we have a, a column of values here. There's 999 of them if you scroll down. The picture here just refers to the value at the very top of the column. So we can see these values fluctuating around 0.16. And if we could increase the number of throws of the die, which I'll attempt to do now, these numbers, these relative frequencies should approach 1 16th, 1 sixth which is 0.166 recurring. Here I've increased the frequency to 2000 and the relative frequencies are still approaching 0.1666. I'd have to keep doing this many many times, it's just not practical. So you can just take my word for it that if a die is truly fair or unbiased then the relative frequencies of the numbers 1 to 6 will approach 1 sixth. So we can say that the probabilities of all these numbers 1 to 6 are 1 sixth, or equiprobable events. Let's consider the probability of throwing an even number on a die. Well, that's the probability of throwing a 2, a 4, or a 6. We could look at the relative frequencies of throwing these numbers. So the relative frequency of throwing an even number would be 0.173 plus 0.156 plus 0.1666 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 
plus 0.166 for the case where we have a frequency of 2000 throws. So we sum these numbers 0.173 plus 0.156 plus 0.166. This is the relative frequency for throwing an even number. And you see we get 0.495, which is very close to 0.5. So as we saw, the sum approach is a half. And as we increase the number of trials, we will get closer and closer to one half. That means that the probability is a half. Um, but we can arrive at a half by simply adding the probabilities of getting a 2, a 4, or a 6. For the single event of getting a 2 on a die, the probability is 1 sixth. The relative frequency approaches 1 sixth. The same is true for the event getting a 4 or the event getting a 6. So you see, we just sum the probabilities and that's 3 sixths, which is a half. If an event consists of other events which are mutually exclusive, then the probability of the event is the sum of the probabilities of the constituent events. So in the example, our event is getting an even number. That's what the event is. And this event consists of the events getting a 2, getting a 4, or getting a 6. These events, getting a 2, getting a 4, or getting a 6, are mutually exclusive, which means that if we get a 2, then we certainly don't get a 4 or a 6. Or if we get a 4, that excludes the other possibilities, getting a 2 or a 6. We will see later, in later videos, where we will be dealing with events that are not mutually exclusive. So it, this will make more sense later. Anyway, for now, the probability of getting this event is just a sum of the probabilities of the constituent events. So our event, in this case, if we want to call it E, is, is getting an even number. And an even number, well, this event consists of these three events getting a 2, getting a 4, or getting a 6. So we sum the probabilities of each of these events. So we get 1 6 plus 1 6 plus 1 6, which is a half.